alone. So your insulin is no longer telling your cells you can't use fat. They're going, you can use fat. Yes, it's okay to use fat. So then, then your um, then your cells start using fat for energy, and as they use fat for energy, um, they become you become less and less insulin resistant. So what you're doing is getting less and less insulin over time. Exactly the opposite of what the doctor and the nutritionist were telling you to do. So hello guys, it's uh, Dr. Saunders and I, we are back, excited to chat with you about all things type 2 diabetes. Uh, if you are new here, please say hello in that chat. If you're watching on Zoom, uh, you can just type in there and say my first time or or whatever. Uh, we just want to know who's here uh, joining us today and we're excited that you're here guys. This is a really fun webinar. We have a lot of people that come back week after week. Even people who have reversed their type two still come back and hang out with us. And they love to share their story too. So if you're one of those people, feel free to type up a quick overview and put that in the chat. I'd love to read it. Or if you want, I can bring you on camera and you could share it, which would be kind of fun. For like three minutes, you get like a three minute uh, sharing time to tell us your story. All right. Lots of people hopping on. Cool, cool. Facebook, YouTubers, hello. You guys are awesome. Feel free to comment in the chat as well. We're going to do our best to answer as many of these as we uh, uh, questions as we can while we're live. Um, so not all of them will we be able to get to, but we're going to do our best. We're going to talk about some type two related things today. We're going to be talking about what our program really is. What is the Diabetes Solution Kit? Why are we doing it? What is needed if you want to reverse your type two? What is the best thing that you can do? What's happening with your body when you have type two? And we want to hear from you guys. Uh, sometimes it's really interesting to see what you guys are doing. One of the things that I'm always curious about is when you guys first met with your doctor and you found out that you had type two, what was the discussion that happened? I know that's a big question to ask, but you can post that in the chat. What did your doctor say to you? Um, did you just go do a test? They said, hey, you have type two. Here's a prescription. See you in a little while. You know, what was it? What did they say? Or did they say, hey, I want to run some more tests. Um, you can change this other ways. You don't need to take a prescription. You know, let us know. Rand said there was no discussion. I was just given a prescription. Okay. How common is that, Dr. Saunders? Oh, very common. Very common. So the, the idea, um, um, when I was working at Kaiser, we had... Um, at 12 minutes per patient, um, and it was really m m about 10 because <laughs> they'd always squeeze people in. Um, <clears throat> and that includes filling out the chart and everything. So uh, so you really don't have time to discuss. Think about it like and we have an hour on here and, and we haven't discussed everything about diabetes. And yet we have what? Uh, to over 200 hours of, of talking about diabetes with questions people have and going back and forth. And, and I'm sure other people are on here listening to that, to, to somebody's question going, Oh yeah, I wanted to know that. Yeah. That, and that's my yep. question. So, so you think about that of the, you know, many, many hours, doctors don't have that kind of time. They had, they just have time to say, what's your symptom? Oh, high blood sugar. What's the drug? Oh, metformin. Here you go. Let's marry those together. See ya. And uh, and then and, and and follow up. And then you just keep repeating that same process over and over again. There really isn't time to have a discussion to do what we're doing. Yeah. And at some point, you know, some of those doctors just get frustrated with that and they decide to break out and do things different like Dr. Saunders, which we're thankful for on occasion. Yeah, you've been known to get into trouble a few times, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> you've been known to go against the grain a few times, which is important, I think. So um, we appreciate you. We appreciate the research that you do. We appreciate the things that you're willing to talk about that uh, not everyone's willing to share with us. Uh, there's not a lot of money in telling someone to eat different, unfortunately. And uh we just need to be aware of those things. And that doesn't mean that this is going to be the only solution for all of you. It doesn't mean that you just doing this is going to take all of your problems away. And that's what we're going to talk about. 
Um, we're going to talk, we actually did a webinar last week on the things to do. If maybe, maybe you have the diabetes solution kit, you're going into it, you're hearing these stories of people hopping on the webinar who are like, guys, <laughs> I reversed my type two in like three weeks. It was amazing, right? And then there's some people who have said, you know, it took me a year. And then there's some people who are saying, why are my numbers not changing at all? I'm stuck. And so last week we went through the list of what to do if you're stuck. Uh, check these things, kind of a checklist. And, oh, it was so good. It was a very, very important webinar. So please go back and check that out. Actually, I, I, I thought it was one it. of the best ones ever. I oh, thought, it was I, so I thought you know, that, that was brilliant that you brought that up. You know, let's, let's talk about this because, and, it, and, and so Monty, you're the one, if you're on, I don't know, but, but, uh, but you're the one that instigated that because, uh, cause you're the one that sent the email and said, Hey, wait a minute, I've been working on this for a long time. Yes. And you're not alone. You're not alone in that. And so it, it, yes, it was great. And actually guys, I don't, that webinar isn't even on the site yet. It will be though, by the end of the week. So if you're wondering what I'm talking about, we record all of our webinars. So Dr. Saunders said we have over 200 hours of type two information and questions and teaching. That's all on a YouTube channel for free, just like this webinar, right? So if you miss one of these, you can go back and watch the replay. Go to bartonwebinar.com. There's a link to our YouTube channel, okay, guys? And, and you will not only find fixed blood sugar webinars, you will find healthy heart webinars. You'll find some uh, hit workouts that you can do. You'll find a lot of information there. We're proud of that website, of that YouTube channel. Like there's good stuff happening there. And if you wanna get an education on type two, that's where you should go and come back to these webinars. But anyway, okay, let's get started. Dr. Saunders, first, will you give us a disclaimer about why we need a disclaimer? <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Um, you need a, re a relationship with a doctor one-on-one -on -one that who can, who can help you specifically because you're unique. Uh, and then, and so what I do here is I give general information that is going to apply to a lot of people and uh, hopefully a lot of people um, and, and may not apply to you specifically. So make sure that you take the information and, and properly apply it to you. And you may need help with that, like with the, you know, professional. All right. So this is what we're going to do today, guys. We are going to have Dr. Saunders explain what's happening in our body when we are using the diabetes solution kit. And just to kind of give you some information, I imagine that you were just diagnosed with type two. You somehow stumbled across this, which maybe a lot of you, this is your story. Let us know. I'd love to hear. And you're thinking, okay, I'm digging in, but why, why this, why are we doing this? What is the importance of the diabetes solution kit and what's happening in your body? Take it away, Dr. Saunders. Okay. So, so you walk, you walk into your doctor and, um, and, and you tell him, I don't know, something like, uh, gosh, I've been gaining weight and I don't know why, uh, or I'm urinating all the time. And I just can't, I, I can't sleep all night because I keep getting up to pee. Um, and, and you say, what the heck? And the doctor does some tests. And next thing you know, you come back and, and, uh, and the doctor says, hey, um, you got the diabetes and, uh, and there's nothing you can do about it. Just here, take this drug and, uh, and, uh, and follow your blood sugar and let me know what happened. Go see the nutritionist. Uh, and the nutritionist tells you, well, you should eat five small meals a day with snacks in between so you never have an empty stomach. Um, and, uh, and you go, okay, I'll try that. And, and you keep going back to the doctor, your blood sugars are still over 200. So they put you on another medication. Uh, and then, uh, and, uh, and that's not working <laughs> after uh, a couple of months, you go back and, and, uh, and they put you on a third medication and, uh, and the next thing you know, you're injecting insulin. Uh, to try and get that blood sugar down because it just is so stubborn it won't go down and and you're wondering what the heck so let here's what the heck so you went to the nutritionist the nutritionist did exactly what nutritionists are taught to do and they still teach this in that in the uh, nutrition school um you eat five small meals a day with snacks in between so you never have an empty stomach so that you never get hypoglycemia, low blood sugar, because that's dangerous, right? Um, well, that is, I got to tell you guys, that is the worst advice you could give to somebody with diabetes besides put a gun to your head and pull the trigger. 
That would, so this is the second worst advice you could give to anyone with, di with type two diabetes. Why? Because your problem is insulin resistance. And what is that multiple meals a day gonna do to you? Every time you eat, you make more insulin. Then you eat again, you make more insulin. Then you eat again, you make more insulin. So you're getting more and more insulin resistant. And then you go to the doctor and they give you a drug. What does the drug do? It tells your pancreas to make more insulin. So then you're making more insulin. And then you get another drug. What does that do? Make more insulin. And then you're injecting insulin. And your problem is too much insulin. And they're giving you more of what you already have too much of. That's the what the heck. That's what the heck. So what, what, so what do you do and what happens on this program? Well, it's exactly the opposite. You don't get five small meals a day. You get only 20 grams of carbohydrates a day. 20 grams. That's not enough for you to live on, by the way. And if it's not enough for you to live on, what does it mean? Well, what it means is that you're not eating enough for your blood sugar to go up. So you can't get any sugar into your cells. So your cells start going, oh my gosh, what am I going to do? I don't have any glucose. And they're going to, and they're going to start going, oh, I, I'm going to have to use fat. Oh, darn, I guess I'll just have to use fat for energy. And you got all this extra fat on your body, right? Um, and so, and, and they're, they're always, because insulin resistance means, because insulin is telling your body, don't use fat. So as, as you're on this program, eating very few carbohydrates, you're not making any insulin. So your insulin drops down. So your insulin is no longer telling your cells you can't use fat. They're going, you can use fat. Yes, it's okay to use fat. So then, then, your, um, then your cells start using fat for energy. And as they use fat for energy, um, they become, you become less and less insulin resistant. So what you're doing is getting less and less insulin over time, exactly the opposite of what the doctor and the nutritionist were telling you to do. And, and so why is that important? Because your insulin resistance is going down, your insulin sensitivity is going up, and so you need only a little bit of insulin to provide the same effect. Why is that important? Because you're no longer insulin resistant, so your brain can get all the glucose it needs. You know, when you're insulin resistant, it blocks resistance, means it blocks sugar from getting through the blood brain barrier. Your kidneys are getting all the sugar they need. Your heart's getting all the sugar it needs. <clears throat> so your organs are working well because you don't have insulin resistance. This is really important. So if you look at our program, phase one of the program is simply a detox. You are toxic on sugar and the doctors telling you, oh, go ahead and eat all the sugar you want. It's okay. In fact, you should probably snack on sugar. Um, and, and, and you're getting more and more toxic. Whereas on our program, you're getting less and less toxic. You're actually using up all that excess sugar that's in there. Toxicity isn't that something is poisonous. It's that you have too much of something. You could get toxic on water. Did you know there was water toxicity? That that's a thing. That um, there was a woman in Sacramento, California, a few years back that died of water toxicity because they had a, um, a, a water drinking contest, and she only got second place in the contest and then died. Uh, the guy that got first first place didn't even die. Um, but yes, you can get water toxicity. I've had patients with it. And it's actually fairly common these days because everybody's being told to uh, drink their weight in water every day or whatever, <laughs> in ounces of water every day. I'm like, are you kidding me? That's ridiculous. So I have so many people that do that. They go, yeah, yeah, God. And they've got these gallon jugs with um, 10 o'clock a.m., 11 o'clock a.m. I got to drink that much by that, by that amount of time. Uh, no. No, no, no. Because what it does is it depletes sodium. So that's water toxicity. You can have salt toxicity. Otherwise, what? You sprinkle salt on you. Are you never going to use salt again? No. You, could, you don't want to be toxic. You don't have too much, but you know you still need it. It's still part of your body. You have to use it or, you're, or you can't make energy, right? So sugar is the same way. You can't make energy without it, but too much is toxic. So that's what this is all about.
It's just cleansing from the toxicity of having too much. Whereas when you go to the doctor, they don't cleanse you from toxicity. They make you more toxic. And all of the drugs, they make you more toxic. So that's where the issues lie. That's the big difference. And that's why people are saying, oh my gosh, after years of diabetes, I am finally off of medications. Because once you detox, you don't need those anymore. Wow. Uh, this reminds me of someone that I know that went to the doctor and they found out they, they weren't celiac, but they found out they, that they had a pretty moderate allergy to gluten. And instead of telling them that they said, don't stop eating gluten, we're just going to give you an acid reflux medication. <laughs> oh no, really? My mind. I still am like, I could not have heard that story correctly. But it's just reminding me of that, you know, I, I there are always things that we can do if we really want to get to the root problem of what's happening, you know, and anyway, uh, so that's what we really, that's, that's why we appreciate this program. Guys, this is the easiest. Well, no, I'm not going to say it's the easiest. That is not true. It is not easy to eat it's 20 simple. net grams of carbs. It's simple, but not easy. <laughs> it will be the least expensive thing that you do. I will say that it'll be the least yeah. expensive. Um, and really it is the most, you're right. It is the most simple. And so um, that is why so many people have messaged us. Once you get over that initial learning curve, however long that takes you, you, many people have messaged us and said, this is the easiest and the best thing that I've ever done. And then, you know, what happens once, um, you know, life happens and sometimes they get off track a little bit, which can happen. Sometimes it's a birthday party or a holiday and they, and they, check their numbers and they're like, oh my goodness, my numbers were really high. Guess what they did? They went right back to what they learned here. They got right back on track and they're, they understand their bodies now. That's the beauty of this program is you learn how your body works and you can see the way that foods affect it. And it's just such a great, great program. We talk a lot about um, uh, the kitchen sink. And so some of you know what we're talking, what, what I mean when I say that, but Dr. Saunders talks about that a lot. And the overview of that, Dr. Saunders, is finding out that you have a lot of sugar is kind of like letting the sink just run while you get your mops and, and, and keep trying to mop up the water, but you never turn the sink off. It's just crazy. It doesn't make sense. And so keep that in mind when you think about taking care of your body. And that's what people have been doing and have found great success that way. So um, let's dig into a couple of these questions here, if you're all right with that. Actually, I wanted to read because some people were chiming in about what happened when they found out that they had type two. Uh, Rayanne said, I was told to see an endocrinologist and I didn't even know what that was, but it took me over a year to make the appointment because I didn't know why I needed to make the appointment, which I think is so funny. <laughs> I mean, it's not, you're talking about your health, you know, so that's not funny, but at the same time, so why are they telling her to go see an endocrinologist? The endocrinologists <clears throat> are traditionally um, people that deal with hormones. So these are the doctors, the specialists in hormones. Mm -hmm. And because insulin is a hormone, uh, that uh, the, the endocrinologist took over all of the metabolic stuff like diabetes. And then that was type 1 diabetes initially. Uh, and then uh, when type 2 diabetes came around, they named it the same, type 1 type two, it's just both diabetes and one is adult onset and one is child onset. And, and so the endocrinologist just took over all of that stuff, all the metabolic stuff, and they don't know anything about it. That's the problem. All they know is the hormone parts of it, the insulin. So then, you know, there's drugs that increase your insulin or you can inject insulin. And, and so that they learn about the, the hormones and that's what endocrinology is. Okay. Uh, let's see, Ronnie says, so far, I don't have diabetes. The doctor just said that my A1C is pre-diabetic. All she said was to bring that down. And I asked her a few questions, but not terribly rewarding, she said. So see, there you go. Do do phase one and it'll, and it'll be so remarkable. It'll be amazing. <laughs> John said when he found out that he had type two, uh, the doctor said, here, take this. So there you go. <laughs> I love it. Uh, Rayanne said, thank you all for, for all of your education. I've learned so much and I'm taking control of my health now that I know. That's awesome. Thank that's you. We're glad that you're here. Yes. We're so glad you're here. 
Um, we have the new person here today. Okay. Uh, I'm going to try to say this. Nidika. Nidika. How about that? Uh, I was told my blood sugar level is borderline and I should stay away from fast sugar. What does that mean? Huh. Well, fast sugar means things that are absorbed quickly. And that's would some, be something with a high glycemic index. So that would be anything that contains added sugar or things like watermelon um, that has and things with a high glycemic index would be considered fast sugar. Okay. Uh, and uh, this person is from Aberdeen, Scotland, and it is their first time. So we're excited that you're here. I'm sorry. I tried to pronounce your name correctly, but I'm just really excited that you're here. Awesome. Okay, who else here? We have some some fun notes from people. Uh, Jean said, take these drugs and make a new appointment in six months. That's what he <laughs> I know, right? Here, okay, John said, I have not changed too much as it seems like I'm a dedicated backslider. Okay, John, you are hilarious. I love all your comments that you have. I think you always have funny <laughs> comments on here. Uh, but you know what? You're, you, you're showing up. You're still... Uh, listening and learning. So we believe in you. Spend this week really, really focusing. Come back next week and let us know how you did. Okay. Do you know what? Do you know what, John? I, I got to tell you, um, I am a backslider as well. You know, I have weaknesses, and uh, and uh, I'm supposed to not eat after six, and I get home after six sometimes. Like, I'm so hungry, and I just eat something. And you know backsliding okay it's a thing I get it and that and that's what we all do and that's why Paul the Apostle called us all sinners because uh, that's what we do um, but if you if you just hang in there and keep going you just keep trying keep trying keep trying and, and just the fact that you're trying uh, is going to improve your function as opposed to those who give up and just you know slide all the way back down the waterfall down to the gulf of misery and endless woe <laughs> That's good. the gulf of misery oh that's good okay uh inga says 20 years ago my then doctor sent me to the florida hospital diabetes class this program with dietary changes and medications helped me to lose 150 pounds Ooh, wow. foreman, foreman made me very ill i'm now on uh Glamperide. Okay, glim there's so many that are so close, and then I get them They're confused. close, yeah. Uh, and Genuvia. What a difference compared to getting ill from regular insulin. Uh, and then it says Novolog 70 over 39 and Levomir gave me migraine headaches. Mm. Okay. Yeah, great. That is so amazing. Good. So good. I, I, I'd be interested in that program. Uh, I know locally there's a clinic that has a, a diabetes uh, program that does uh, fasting. Essentially, it's not it's not really fasting, they, it, but it's a like a super low calorie, 500 calorie a day, you know, uh, meal preparation. Or they, they they give you the meals. This is all you can eat. That what what they give you, and um, and that's worked for some people I know. But they gain it all back. So don't gain it back. Just yeah. stay on a, stay on our program. Uh, Ronnie says, I know that drastically changing my eating habits has made me feel better and lose weight. Since July, I have lost 30 pounds. I seem to be sort of stuck around where I am now, but it's okay. I'm also walking more. Oh, good job. Good. See? Yeah. Good. All right. Uh, Dan said there was no discussion. I got a prescription for test strips and metformin. Yeah. Oh, Monty's here. Monty said, I'm here because of your gracious help. And I take this meeting every week scheduled to get the testing you asked me to do. I appreciate the folks here. Yay. Your genuine help. Send me Love the results. It. Yes. Love it. And we talked about those tests on the webinar last week, guys. So if you want yeah. to learn more about that, definitely watch it. Uh, you can go to our YouTube channel, go to bartonwebinar.com, click on the YouTube one of the videos, it'll take you to our channel. Subscribe so that you get notified every time one of those gets uploaded. Okay, uh, Rosaria. Rosaria takes, uh, I'm going to maybe glipizide. It says glipizide, okay, and berberine. And my sugar is still 180 in the morning. Should I take lean apple cider vinegar to help bring down my sugar? Okay, okay. 
This is great. So, um, Rosaria, I gotta say, this is a great thing. Um, that, that I thank you for asking that because it's not about the the pills that you're taking. Uh, yes, berberine's great for helping, and uh, glipizide or whatever will cause you to increase the amount of insulin that you're taking, but that's going to make you more insulin resistant over time. The only thing, the only thing, the, the best thing you could do to really bring down your blood sugar uh, into below 100 uh, at night uh, or in the morning um, is to go do phase one of the program. Do phase one. That's the, that's the way to start this. Don't think that the medications or pills or berberine or supplements or uh, uh, synechroma or any of those things are going to lower your blood sugar that's not their purpose well that is uh some that is the it purpose of the glipid side but okay. it's not going to work yes and i could already see we have a lot of questions asking something similar so thank you for addressing that uh that's probably one of the biggest questions that we get is what can i take what, what can I just take quick to help take care of these problems, right? I mean, that's what we all want. So I get it. I totally get it. Uh, Ronnie wants to know if you're taking patients, Dr. Saunders. Um, well, uh, occasionally. I, I have a license in California and Utah. So um, if, 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 if you're in one of those states, um, or I, I had somebody from, she was in Las Vegas she drove to St. George, Utah and called me from there and said, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm in St. George. And then so so we started our relationship and then she went back to, to Las Vegas and we, we worked with her from there because yeah, because like, like she had a, she had an address in Utah. So it was OK. Awesome. OK, uh, let me see. And they can find you. Yeah, they can even Google you and find you probably. OK. Um, Rayanne said, sounds like my story. By the third medication that the doctors had given her, uh, she decided I was better off figuring out this thing by herself. So uh, that's funny. Okay, here is another question from Jerry. Can I get more, can I take more than one pill per day of Synechroma so that I can get more of the vitamin K2 to clean out my arteries and blood vessels in my feet and legs? My feet are getting cold. Oh, Okay. Um, so the vitamin K, yeah, 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 that would be, that would be okay. So if you take two a day, you're going to get 10,000 units of vitamin D and that's the, the upper side of, of good, of normal. Um, uh, one pill a day is the lower side of, of, of normal. Um, and then, and then the vitamin K is going to give you the upper side of that too. And that may be helpful having that extra K2. Um, yeah, that's fine. And, and it does not even come close to overdosing on any other one. So yeah, you could do it twice a day. Okay. But don't, Maybe. not more, not more than twice a day, twice a day. Uh, David said, I still need to better control my blood sugar, but my body mass index keeps dropping. I was happy at 25, but now it's 24. I think I need three meals a day, but I want to keep up the intermittent fasting to help myself recover. How do I do that without dropping more weight? Okay. If you're dropping weight is because you're insulin sensitive and you're making less insulin because it's only insulin that makes you put on weight. If you don't have insulin, you cannot put on weight. Um, so you need insulin. So yes, eating more frequently will cause you to make more insulin, but where is your insulin or why are, don't you have enough insulin? And you know, what's going on there? There's something weird here. If you're, if your blood sugar is high and you're, uh, and you're dropping weight, it may mean that your insulin is low, which is the reason we do that. Those four tests. The glucose, hemoglobin A1C, C peptide, and insulin level. And so do those four tests, and that'll give you a, a picture of, of what's going on, how your pancreas is functioning, and what's going on with your, um, wh why, why this might be happening. All right, and I'm going to post those tests in the chat so that you guys have those. Um... Okay, Rosalind sent a message said, Hi, Dr. Saunders. The week before last, I mentioned taking a pain shot that raised my blood sugar for a month to 359. You recommended that I detox, and I did that, and I dropped to 202. 
Wow. I now, yeah, I now have uh, contracted COVID and I've been put on steroids for four days along with some COVID medication. <laughs> I have no idea how I've contracted it. I just woke up and had it. And now it's over 400. This is so disconcerting. I just started another detox, but now I have COVID. How long should I wait before I try again? I just got diagnosed on Monday. And we're going to have to be careful with our discussion about COVID. So we'll just, let's talk about viruses, maybe in general. <laughs> if we say that word, they just take us off uh, YouTube. Okay. So, uh, so, okay. So the, the thing is when, when you're given steroids for any reason, even like, even like, oh, my shoulder's hurting and the doc gives a, you know, cortisone injection in your, in your uh, shoulder or knee or something um, that what can do the same thing. And not everybody has that much of a reaction. Most people will get up high, like maybe up to 200, but this, you know, 400. Um, um, what you're going to have to do is just the same thing, wait. You know what, it doesn't matter. Your blood sugar being that high for a few weeks or whatever isn't gonna be any problem at all. It's not gonna affect you at all. Um, and then you can do a cleanse and, and, uh, and after you're all better, after your COVID's better, because you know, the inflammation from being sick also causes you to have uh, high blood sugar as well. So there's, there's more going on. Just wait till you're better and then do a cleanse or a detox. Uh, Maria said, okay, so Maria's talking about, I think when she was first diagnosed with type two, she said, I had a dry, I had dry mouth. So I made an appointment with my doctor. She said she would give me artificial saliva I said, do I have diabetes? And she told me, no, she did do blood work too. And in two hours, she called me and said, I do have diabetes. She sent me to a nutritionist and I left with no information other than keep eating. <laughs> I smoke today with snacks in between. Uh, okay. Oh, that sounds so frustrating. Artificial saliva. Oh my gosh. Really, Bruce? Yeah. Where does that come from? <laughs> I don't know. In my mind, I kept thinking, wait, this artificial is like, okay, well, at least it's not coming from someone else. That would have been weirder. So, okay. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know what that is, but that's interesting. Okay. Uh, Inga said, when we visited family in Germany years ago, you worked from eight to 22 and two to six. Okay. I'm confused. To all times. Okay. Um, 12 to two was set aside to eat your big meal of the day in the morning and the evening. You ate a light meal. I started doing this last year and have finally lost another 26 pounds. So you're eating very light in the morning. You're eating between 12 and two eating your big meal. And then your evening meal is just very light. And so that alone has helped you to lose 26 pounds. That's great. You know, that's like the 610 reset, you know, you, where you stop eating after six so that you go to bed with an empty stomach. That's pretty smart. Yeah, that's good. All right. Okay, that's the pain chat one. Let's see. Okay, Ronnie said in the morning, I have coffee uh, with half and half and a fourth of a, not a teaspoon, not a tablespoon, a little bit of sugar. That's, that's what we'll say. Uh, is this breaking my fast from the night? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Sugar and milk will both break a fast actually. Yeah. So sugar, also, sugar, sugar and milk and caffeine, uh, will all essentially break your fast. Um, I also take prescribed, prescribed pills and your supplements that I don't eat till after three usually. And then I try not to eat again. Although I often end up snacking with hummus. Is this a long enough period of time for fasting? Well, um, there is such a thing as intermittent fasting. Oh, there's a great book. You guys, um, let's see. I, I don't agree with everything in the book, but it's she's really good. Um, it's called Fast, Feast, Repeat, and it's Jin Stevens, G-I-N Stevens with a P-H. And um, that, that book, uh, she talks about a clean fast. And what clean means is you can have coffee, but it can't have anything in it. No fat, no coconut oil, no sugar, no, no milk, um, and uh, no butter. So just black coffee, black tea, or water, and then nothing else while you're fasting. So if you're taking snacks, remember every time you eat, you're causing insulin to be made. 
and and that's uh, counterproductive. So, so yeah, it, you know, if you're eating at three, like if you have, I don't know, just a coffee and, and something in the morning and then you eat at three and then nothing after that, that's great. So I think that's a great idea. Okay. Uh, John Miller says, throw out the leftover Halloween candy. Yes. Just plain throw it out. I like yeah. that. Uh, and then have a message. I'm not for sure. I'm not sure who this is from. It says, hello, Leslie and Dr. Saunders. After going back to England, I got to think about who went back to England. I fell off the wagon again and my doctor called me in and we had a long conversation because my Ooh, A1C good. was 12.75. Oh my gosh. He gave me the choice of various medications, but settled on metformin 500 two times a day, plus glimperide two times a day as well. I told him I'll do it reluctantly for one month and then I'm, then stop. He agreed. If my numbers got better, I have to jump back on the van, on the wagon. So yes, you can do this. Do, do phase one. Yeah, that's it. Do phase one. So you know what? What is really interesting about that? Uh, metformin, uh, statistically speaking, when when research was done, uh, five hundred milligrams twice a day was not enough to lower blood sugar. That if you wanted to lower blood sugar, it had to be a thousand milligrams twice a day. And it can even go up from there. So, you know, interesting. Yeah, that is interesting. Okay, here's a message from Worth. And the question says, because Thanksgiving's coming up. So this is a good question. But Worth is wondering what kind of milk to buy to make a resistant starch sweet potato pie. So I have a lot of questions about this pie. First of all, okay. if you found a low carb sweet potato pie, you should share that with all of us. Well, uh, resistant, re resistant starch is uh, is changing, essentially changing the potato or sweet potato from the, the starch in the potato, you change it to a resistant starch, which means it resists being broken down in your intestines. Uh, and then it becomes like fiber and goes and feeds your good bacteria. So um, uh, what kind of milk? I don't know what kind of milk uh, to do to do that. And I think probably um, all, I mean, well, it depends. Yeah. Milk isn't, doesn't have a lot of carbs. I mean, it can, if regular milk can, because they put sugar in it, but your yeah. coconut milks, I mean, actually, that's actually probably what I would do. You know, like canned coconut milk. Yeah. I'm, okay. Yeah. That might be good. Actually. Yeah. For a sweet potato pie, that might be really good. <laughs> it's low carb. Yeah. yeah. I mean, almond milk would be low carb too. I like coconut milk better than almond, but you can do whatever you want. I don't know. It's amazing how much sugar cow's milk. Do you guys know that cow's milk, a, a cup of cow's milk has like 11 grams of sugar in it? It's it's a lot, you know? So one cup is like half your, half is all you can have on phase one of the program. Uh, why, are we, why are we adding sugar to that? Because raw milk is good. Yeah, it is. You know? I, I grew up on raw milk. I'm always confused by that. I'm like, I mean, I know, whatever. Who knows? I suppose maybe once it's pasteurized. I don't know all the details. So anyway, okay, let us know, Worth. We're very curious now about your resistant starch sweet potato pie. <laughs> Love it. All right. So resistant starch, the, the way to make it is you 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 cook the starch and then you cool it, like you cool it in the refrigerator and it becomes resistant starch. So uh, that's... Uh, that's kind of interesting. I I was doing some research on fiber, uh, our fiber article, and I found resistant starch as part of that. Interesting. Fiber. Okay. Cool. Uh, let me see. Okay, rather than retype that. Okay, I'm gonna look over here. Okay, this is from Monty. Uh, I still use insulin, but I obviously have very serious insulin resistance. Should I not be using insulin then, in your opinion? My insulin... Um, if you have insulin resistance, insulin is the worst thing you could be using. Um, it, it is uh, insulin um, is the problem. So if, if when people talk about complications of diabetes and they say, oh, because the blood sugar is high. No, no, no. It's not because your blood sugar is high. It's insulin resistance. So some people have a high blood sugars in the 500s for years and have no issues at all. Other people have normal blood sugar and they already have neuropathy and, and kidney disease and they're getting Alzheimer's disease and heart disease. And you're like, what the heck? Their, their blood sugar is still normal. 
it's the insulin resistance that's the problem. And so this high insulin level is the problem. So if you're injecting insulin, what are you doing? You're causing more insulin resistance because you have these cells that are jam packed with sugar and the insulin is trying to pack more sugar into them. And so you're getting more toxic. So um, yeah, insulin for as someone who's insulin resistant, insulin is the worst thing you can take. So, uh, so in Monty, in your case, you're doing those studies. I hope if, if it's the same Monty, the um, yeah. if you're doing, then you're going to see exactly how much insulin. I've had people, you know, a normal insulin level, a fasting insulin level should be around five. Uh, up to ten is considered normal. Five is is ideal. Um, and, uh, and above 20 is really high. 25 is high. 30 is really high. I had somebody who was 160 one time. Their pancreas was just pumping out insulin like crazy. Uh, I'm going to make sure I didn't miss anything in the rest of his message here. Uh, my insulin does not seem to have one ounce of impact on my numbers. My dawn phenomena is amazing. I will add 60 to 70 points on my glucose meter in a very short time, and it stays for several hours and it comes down slowly. I realize you're not my doctor, but if you were, what would you do? I have felt for <laughs> some time. I have felt for some time now that my insulin is doing absolutely nothing for me. And I think he actually answered that. <laughs> Okay, yeah, I actually did answer that because your your cells are jam packed and they just can't take in any more sugar. So the insulin, there's no insulin receptors left on your cells, so the insulin's going to be useless. No, it just makes you wonder how many other people are in this same boat out there, you know, yeah. taking yeah. insulin when it's not helping you. Okay. Here we go. If you're interested in the Diabetes Solution Kit, you can find that at bartonwebinar.com. Use code WEBINAR25 and you will save 25%. Oh, look, John, you already filled that in for me. You're the best. Okay. Uh, John said, I have managed over the past year to reduce my A1C to 6.7 from 8.6. Nice job. Mm -hmm. Uh, okay. Another good question here from Jesse. What can be done about low vitamin D and low cortisol? Okay. Low vitamin D is simple. Take a vitamin D pill. Uh, Cinechroma has 5,000 units of vitamin D and that's just the right amount uh, to get you up to a normal level. Uh, what's really interesting, I'm writing an article for Home Cures That Work uh, on, on the J curve. And the J curve is found in just about anywhere. And gosh, I have found so many J curves over time that I decided to put it in an article. And it's not as about a specific illness in anything. It's just the J curve. And what that is, is uh, anytime you have a graph of mortality versus the level of anything, you're going to have a J curve. What the J curve means is mortality increases when you're deficient. And then, and then it goes down until there's an optimum range and then mortality goes up again when you get too much. So toxicity on this side, deficiency on this side, and then this optimum level. And th there's one I've showed you, the guys, the one that, for cholesterol, uh, uh, but there's one for vitamin D as well. And there's an optimum level of vitamin D and that optimum level it, it, in the blood um, is around, if you, if you measure the blood level, it's around 30 milligrams per deciliter. That's the, the, the units. Um, and vitamin and 5,000 units gets you right about there. Um, now, the toxicity of vitamin D is like way out there. It's like over 100. And, uh, but uh, some people do have more problems with too much vitamin D. So having this optimum range is good. And so all you do is just take 5,000 units once a day, and that'll give you a good amount. Right. What was the other one? Oh, cortisol. 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 Oh, well, um, cortisol is too low. Is that what it is? Yep. Yeah, cortisol is too low. Okay. Uh, low cortisol, now that's a different issue. You need a to be on a good circadian rhythm. So you got to eat around seven or eight o'clock in the morning, every morning, exactly on time, seven o'clock or eight o'clock in the morning. You've got to stop eating by six o'clock, have an empty stomach when you go to bed um, by 10 o'clock. And that means like 930 every night you're in bed at exactly that time. And then you wake up every morning 
set an alarm at six o'clock or seven or whatever. Um, and at, at, the, at the same time every morning, um, and this has been done multiple times. There was actually one researcher, I, I went to a, a sleep uh, conference at UCLA uh, last week. And, uh, and there was a researcher that uh, was doing some research on circadian rhythm. How do, you, how do you get the cortisol levels up and get a normal, a good circadian rhythm on, uh, on your cortisol? And he said, he's, finally, uh, he took a whole, they tried everything, they tried the, the lights and taking melatonin and, and uh, different sleep schedules and changes and all that stuff. And they said, if you don't have the exact amount of time, then it doesn't work. And so he took a group of people that he measured all their, did all their numbers, took them out and went camping. And uh, he went camping with them. So they, they were all out in the wilderness camping where, you know, outside there's no lights or anything. Sun goes down, it's dark. And all you have is a campfire. Right. Uh, uh, and uh, and people people got on a normal circadian rhythm and, and all of their numbers improved everything. They didn't just do cortisol. They did the cortisol and the melatonin and the growth hormone and their uh, temperature change. You know, you have you have a daily temperature change too. They and everything like normalized. It became perfect while they were camping. So if you want to get your cortisol normal, go camping. <laughs> I love it. That's awesome though. Uh, it was Dell. Dell was the one who fell off the wagon when he went to England. He sent me a message. So good to know. Now I know Dell. Now I know. I'll remember when you hop on next week. No, I'm just kidding. Thank you for sharing. I appreciate that. Uh, okay, so Elliot wants to know what you think about the new weight loss drug that was approved today by the FDA from Eli Lilly. Any idea? Are you familiar with it? Uh, <laughs> it was I don't know what it is approved today. Approved today from Eli Lilly? I don't know. I don't know okay. what it is. Let us know, Elliot. You can send me another message. Okay, so this is a good question. This is our from our friend who is in uh, Scotland, and they're brand new. Lots of questions. So if you are someone who's pretty new and you're you're kind of not sure where to start, first of all, you're going to want to start with the diabetes solution kit. Okay. So some of these questions that you're going to, that you're asking would be addressed here, but I'm going to go through them. It's a, uh, well, I want to try to say your name again. Hold on. Nadika. That's what I'm going with. Nadika. Um, I love to have mucili for breakfast, but it says it has no sugar, no added sugar although the sugar content is 12 grams. Isn't that interesting? That's good marketing right there, right? Yeah. So <laughs> uh, I also love to eat bananas. Are they good for me? And my other question is, since I've not been diagnosed with diabetes, can I take Synechroma? So let's go back through this. Let's go up to the sugar, no sugar added in this mucili that says it has 12 grams of sugar. Okay. What do you think? Um, so, um, when they say no sugar added, that means they're not taking processed, refined sugar and putting it in, but there are a lot of sugars that are found in other things. So if you look at something like uh, muesli or, um, or, um, I, I, I was so surprised when I looked at Raisin Bran and, uh, and Raisin Bran, uh, even the one there's, there's one that's like frosted, but then there's the, the, the no sugar added one. And, and it was like, you know, 12 grams of sugar per half cup of cereal or something I'm like, wow, uh, that's, that's, and that's not just, that's not the starch. That's just the sugar. Uh, where does it come from? Well, raisins for heaven's sake. So if you have muesli that has, you know, nuts and seeds and raisins and uh, I don't, I don't know, whatever dried fruit and stuff in it, that's going to have sugar in it and dried fruit, you know, they concentrate the sugar, take all the water out and all you have left is the sugar uh and and fiber and stuff so um so yeah mousseli that that's going to have sugar just from from the stuff that they put in and not from added sugar uh okay what was the other question you're going to try to find that well and also something to think about too when you're doing the diabetes solution kit your goal is to stay under a certain number of carbs right. and so it has that meant much sugar check the carbs also you might be surprised there um at least in phase one, you're probably going to want to avoid that as well, or anything that has a lot of carbs. I can't remember. I can't find that question now. Oh, we have so many in here. Okay. I might have to come back to the other questions that were a part of that. Oh, can I take Synechroma even though I don't have 
type two. Yeah. Right, right. Um, yes, you can. I do. Um, I think uh, I think it's good, and it's five thousand units of vitamin D, and everything in there is to allow your body to use sugar efficiently. That's all. It does not for lowering blood sugar. It's just supplements that are commonly deficient that allow you to efficiently use glucose. Um, and then, and so, and it has the vitamin K. And so because it has everything together, they don't have to take separate pills. That's why I use it. All right. Okay. Uh, someone is asking if it's okay to eat snacks between meals because gallbladder removed and there is a history of a stomach ulcer because empty stomach causes burning ses sensation in the stomach. Yeah, that's an issue. Okay. So if you eat something between meals, um, eat something that's uh, pure fat. I don't know. <laughs> something or fiber, like like have. Oh yeah, fiber. That's it. Don't don't eat fat because I was thinking fat because uh, that's not going to raise insulin and it's going to allow the the um, um, the the bile acids uh, are going to going to hang on to the fat. Uh, but there's another thing, fiber. You could just eat something high in fiber. So if you're going to eat between meals, have some broccoli or some celery or uh, something on the free list. We have a list of free foods that are greens and uh, vegetables and some fruits that, uh, that. So yeah, if you have a little bit of broccoli or, so, or something like that between meals, that's not going to raise your insulin significantly. Um, and, and that should be okay. I'm going to phrase Connie's question here about monk fruit a little bit differently because we get a lot of questions from people who say, can I use artificial sweeteners? And the answer is Dr. Saunders does not re recommend that, especially in phase one, because it can act like a sugar in your body. So my question would be, let's say someone is on phase two or three-ish and they're like, all right, I'm going to try some sugars. Do you have any thoughts about where some of these um, natural sugars any of them that you might recommend over another? You mean like an added sweetener? Like, well, uh, like So Connie wants to know if monk fruit is a good substitute to use instead of sugar. Her doctor wants her to go completely using monk fruit instead of yeah. any other sweeteners. Yeah, because it's a non-caloric sweetener, but it's still a non-caloric sweetener, just like stevia or any of the other ones. Okay, so let, let's say you're on phase two, like Leslie was saying, and you wanted to uh, try something out. Uh, that, see, here's where some, the benefit of a continuous glucose monitor, the CGM, yeah. you know, the wearable device that you can follow your blood sugar, because then you start adding like monk fruit and see what happens. I, I, I've seen so many surprises with my patients. I have one patient come in and say, you know what? Um, I tolerate bread. I eat bread and it's like, yeah, my blood sugar stays fine. But man, I had nachos and it was off the charts. Yeah. So, uh, and so I would not have guessed that personally. I would have said, yeah, you probably were better off with the nachos and the bread. But she found completely the opposite. So, yeah. uh, so you know, so having something like a CGM and you're trying out different sweeteners. And you say, man, the monk fruit doesn't affect me at all, but dang, I get some fructose and pff, it's off the charts. So uh, I don't know. I don't know how you're going to respond to that. But so in phase two, where we say we liberal liberalize your diet a little bit um, and, and you make it yours because you're going to individualize it, that's where something like a, a CGM is going to be very helpful. Yes. All right. Uh, we have a Zoom user who said in May, my thyroid was 7.1 and in July, it went down to 4.0. However, she gave me another prescription, which I didn't fill because I thought, well, I am normal. So why should I take more drugs? But on my last week's visit, it was back to seven. What do I do to keep it down to four? Okay. So if you're, if you're, I, I, if the thyroid means the TSH, right, that's the, um, so if that number is seven, that means you're, uh, you have a uh, low thyroid. So you were given some thyroid and that brought it, brought the TSH down to normal. Um, but, but the TSH is just your brain telling your body or your thyroid gland that you have enough. 
And so what you what they're saying is that pill that you got of thyroid is enough. That's that's the right amount for your body. Uh, if you stop taking it, then it's going to go right back to where it was because now you don't have enough anymore. Um, so uh, handling the thyroid is kind of a difficult thing. You have to you have to find out what the problem, what the underlying problem with the thyroid is. It's a it's a, a whole set of, of hormones and supplements uh, or nutrients that the, the thyroid needs. So for example, some people are just low in selenium. If you don't have enough selenium, you don't convert the inactive thyroid to the active form. So you have low thyroid um, just because you're lacking selenium. You add selenium in and everything starts functioning. The, enz the enzyme functions again and it all works. And now you have normal thyroid. Um, so, uh, some people have like nodules in their thyroid or there's, there's other reasons. Um, uh, stress, stress mm -hmm. blocks you from making the T4 to the T3. So you don't make that conversion to the active thyroid from a lot of stress. So sometimes it's an adrenal problem. So looking at the big picture of why, so that, that's where I think if the doctor just prescribed you a, a thyroid medication without saying, uh, what the problem was, what, you know, why do you have low thyroid? Are you low in iodine? You know, that's, that's a possibility. That's actually fairly common in the United States to have uh, low iodine. So, you know, look, look at the options, look at why. Okay. Uh, Tim said, I'll be seeing my doctor November 28th. And thanks to following phase one in Cinechroma, my doctor says she will take me off insulin. Does this using mean still taking meds? My A1C is around seven to eight. I will admit I need to exercise more. Good, good. Exercise more. <laughs> I would recommend that highly. So, and I think they're wondering, will that mean that I still take meds? Yeah, well, it, it might, but, you know, eventually when you when you get your hemoglobin A1C down to five, Point five or whatever, then you're going to be, uh, uh, you're, you're going to, you won't need the medications anymore either. Um, you know, it's interesting. The hemoglobin A1C has a J curve. Remember we talked about the J curve. If you have your hemoglobin A1C is too low, your death rate goes up. And if you're, it's too high, your death rate goes up. There is a perfect level. Guess what the perfect level of hemoglobin A1C is? 5.0 to 5.4. That it's the above five. When it's below 5.0, the, the death rate actually goes up. So there, there is an optimum range for, for hemoglobin A1C. Cool. All right. All right. I'm going to, this will probably be our last question here, but Lorita has sent in some numbers and I'm just hoping maybe, I don't know if you'll be able to see these, but her glucose fasting came in at a 5.8. Um, it says 3.3 to 5.5. Does that make sense to you? Yeah. Okay. Hemoglobin A1C, 5.9. Insulin fasting, 38. And C peptide, 652. Any thoughts? Six. Uh, wow. Wow. Okay. So here's the deal. Th thank you. Those are great numbers. So here's what we're looking at here. The, um, the blood glucose is normal. Hemoglobin A1C is normal, um, but the, the insulin level is really high. In other words, it's taking a lot of insulin to keep your blood glucose at a normal level. So that, that um, a C-peptide being that high, uh, over three, um, it should be around one or 100 if, if you're in Canada. And the, the blood glucose of uh, 3.8 is somewhere around 75 or something like that, um, which is really good. So your glucose is normal. Your hemoglobin A1C is normal, but the insulin is real high. So you have insulin resistance. You should not be taking drugs. You should not be taking insulin. Um, you should be on a very low carbohydrate diet so that you can use up all of the extra um, carbohydrates so that you, you want insulin sensitivity. So you need to get insulin sensitive. That's the problem with this really high insulin and, and normal blood sugar. So in that case, most doctors will say, oh, your blood sugar is normal. Great, great, stay with it. But, but with that high insulin, you're at risk 
that you're at risk for getting kidney disease and neuropathy and, and brain disease and heart disease. So, so don't go with that. Don't go with what the doctor says on that. Get that insulin down to a fasting specimen should be uh, around one or 100 in the case of the C peptide. And, and the, the uh, insulin over 30 is super high. It needs to be around five. Okay, and I'm just confused though because you said her C peptide is 652. Was that right? Oh, I'm sorry, 652. Yeah, C peptide. That's it. Should be one, 100, and it's 600. Wow. Okay. All right. I'm trying to make sure I'm understanding it. All right. Yeah. Very interesting. So she has six times more insulin average as the average person. So super high insulin with normal blood sugar. Okay. That's severe insulin resistance. Okay. Very interesting. Okay, cool. Thank you for sharing that. All right, Dr. Saunders, thank you so much. We'll see you. All right. We'll see him tomorrow. Actually, uh, he'll be on the Healthy Heart webinar. And if you haven't registered for that, guys, make sure you do that. Bartonwebinar.com, 12 noon central time on Thursdays. I think there were some other what or some other things that I might be able to help with in here. I'm going to read a couple of things here. Kind of says my journey has been a give and take ride and kind of bumpy since last April. My weight was 276, but now it is 230, and my A1C has finally dropped to 6.8. That is awesome. I love it. Uh, I'm going to share that with the team because they'll appreciate that. Okay, and the Garcias are on. Barbie and I have been with you for a little over a year now. We both have control of our diabetes issue to the point that we can say we have reversed it. A testimony to the solution kit. We believe we're at a point where we need to get our doctor to clear us officially. The main message is if we can do it, anyone can. Yes, and they are awesome. I'm just, I'm so excited for you guys. All right, what else do we have in here? Okay, you order the manual at bartonwebinar.com and use code webinar25. That's one word and you'll save 25%. And that is the information on the detox. It's a detoxing program. Um, oh, someone had asked a question about, do you have recommendations for the holidays or parties or festivities and that kind of thing? And a couple things that we've talked about on these webinars Um one, if you can bring a dish to share that you make yourself that you know you like, that always helps. So if it can be a low carb dish that you can bring, that's good. And sometimes the best thing to do is eat before you go uh, or at least eat enough so that you aren't going to show up really hungry and want to eat everybody's uh, things that they're bringing to the party, right? Um, okay, coffee typically is okay. Uh, Dr. Saunders will say, I mean, it's low carbs. So if you're trying to incorporate that into your diabetes solution kit, uh, that's a low carb option. Okay. Let me see what else. Where do I find out how to use this webinar chat program? Oh, you found it, Jerry. Good job. You found it. Oh, Worth said, oh, all right. Uh, so Worth cooks the potato in the microwave. Then he freezes the potato overnight and make the pie and potato salad without a spike in blood sugar. That is awesome. Okay, I love that. Uh, do you find home glucose monitors are accurate? I have one and I'm just wondering. Uh, this is a finger prick. Okay, <laughs> they can vary a little bit, um, but but they're fairly accurate. I think Dr. would say, Dr. Saunders would say, um, but you could, you can do it one right after the other and they still can vary a little bit. So I don't know. Okay. So the new information about the new drug from Eli Lilly, Zep, Zepbound, a new weight loss drug, helps people lose 52 pounds in 16 months. You know what? He didn't know any, much information about it. Um, but it is okay. So this is, it is the latest entrant into the field of powerful new drugs that already include, uh, Ozempic and Manjaro, Wigovi. Okay. Yeah. I don't know much about that new one. Okay. Um, anything else that I can help with? Uh, Ernest said raw goat milk is better. That would be an option for you worth for your uh, sweet potato pie, depending upon what the goat has eaten. Love it. 
Oh, this would have been a good question. So guys, bring these question next questions next time. Um, okay. All right, Glenn said ever, Glenn, how are you? Ever since losing my 50 pounds on the diabetes reversal program about three years ago, my feet and hands are always cold. Why and what can I do to change that? You know what, someone asked that at the beginning of the webinar also. So that is very interesting. Um, I don't know what the answer was. Someone was talking about vitamin K, I think, also for that. But that'd be a good question to bring up next time. Oh, Ryan, you posted that link also. Got it. Ernest says, this program has made us aware of carbs and sugar content. It helps reading what the ingredients are before you purchase it. 14 months now, and we are non-diabetic, just doing phase one. Thank you so much, Ernest. I love that you guys helped me because I don't see all of these questions right away. And I appreciate you guys who've been around who can fill in for me. Okay, so I can take coffee with only skimmed milk. Is that okay for sugar levels? I, you know, honestly, if you're doing this, if you're doing the diabetes solution kit, you got to look at the carb carbs in milk. Um, it just depends. Uh, if you're okay with milk, a lot of people will do. Uh, uh, what am I trying to say? Having whipping cream because that has no carbs. So something to think about. Okay, I think I got through all of those. Okay, uh, guys, go to bartonwebinar.com. That's with the hub for all of these webinars. You'll find links to the products that you can purchase and all of that. Uh, if you have any questions, come back next week and we'll try to do those right away. And you'll also find a link to the YouTube channel. I highly recommend that you subscribe to the YouTube channel so that you're notified anytime we upload a new webinar, okay? All right, that's it for me. Thank you guys for being on here. Thank you for all of your wonderful questions. I just really appreciate this because I get to learn a lot right with you guys. Uh, that's it. We'll see you either tomorrow or next week. Have a great day.